Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to case study number 40. This will be bruising in an infant. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or in the I button in the upper right hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions that I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you uh, who have already stepped up to donate. Okay, so we got a 10-month-old boy who's being brought into the ED after his mother noted a bruise on his lower back. She says that she noticed the bruise when he woke up this morning and thought that he may have fallen as he's just begun to walk. However, she says that the bruise seems to have gotten bigger over the last several hours. She says that he's otherwise in good health, but has been prone to bruises ever since he began crawling. Prenatal birth and postnatal history are uncomplicated. He was born at term. Patient has no significant past medical history, no siblings. He takes a multivitamin, is not a picky eater. Family history is notable for an uncle and a grandfather with bleeding problems. Important to know that. He's tracking fine. He's up to date on all vaccinations and his vitals are normal. All right, so what are we going to do for a physical exam? This is a stable patient, so we can be fairly comprehensive. So he's in no apparent distress. He's playful. He's got uh, normal turgor of his skin, H-E-N-T, chest, lungs, cardiovascular, abdomen. All that is good. Now, we want to look at his extremities. We want to look at the bruise. Um, we want to see the nature of it, uh, and we want to see if there are any other bruises. That's always important when you've got a person with a bruise, anyone, uh, that you check for other bruises. So what we find is a large palpable oval-shaped ecchymosis from the lower back to the buttocks. Um, then he's got some small healing bruises over the knees and elbows, so points of trauma. Uh, but there, there's no deformation or edema. Now, we want to do a rectal exam because we think this may be a bleeding issue. So we want to see if there's internal bleeding. Um, and so what we find is that there's goyac negative stool. So he's not bleeding, at least in his GI tract. All right, so what is our differential? Well, you got to consider all the causes of bleeding. So there's factor type bleeding, hemophilia is the big one, and then there's platelet type bleeding. We divide platelet type bleeding into quantitative, meaning the number of platelets is low, uh, or qualitative bleeding, meaning the platelets are not working uh, properly. So uh, I'm not going to go through all these, but you should know sort of these basic differentials uh, when you're considering uh, a bleeding disorder. And then, of course, child abuse needs to be considered any time you've got a child with a lot of bruises. Our initial workup is going to be a CBC with differential. We'll want to do a peripheral smear because we're thinking of hematologic disorders. We want to really get a good look at those blood cells. And then we'll get a PTPTT because bleeding disorder, right? We're thinking bleeding disorder. And what do we find? The CBC is within normal limits. Peripheral smear is unremarkable. PT is normal and the PTT is grossly elevated. So that means that we have either a hemophilia or a von Willebrand's disease. Uh, both of them will cause factor VIII deficiency. Hemophilia A causes factor VIII deficiency, and so does von Willebrand's to a lesser degree. So we need to differentiate them now. Uh, so factor VIII and factor IX will be drawn, and then we'll get a von Willebrand factor assay, aristocetin cofactor, and type and cross match because he's bleeding. So this is done to look for von Willebrand's disease. These two are done to look for the most common types of hemophilia. And what do we find? Everything's normal except for the factor eight. It's very, very low. And so this is a diagnosis of hemophilia A. Now the treatment for hemophilia A when there's significant bleeding is going to be to replace the factor eight. And that will typically work. Now, when would we admit this patient? We're not gonna admit this patient, but we would admit this patient if there were severe symptoms or if a transfusion, a blood transfusion were required. So let's say that he had blood in his stool, or let's say he was anemic, then we would admit him, but we don't need to admit this patient. He's, he's fine, he's just got a bruise. We're going to uh, give him factor eight concentrate. Now our management is going to be to counsel the family regarding the diagnosis. We're gonna set him up with pediatric heme onc, and we'll want him to have a medical alert bracelet because if he goes to some other hospital for some unrelated reason, the doctor needs to know that he's got hemophilia. 
Uh, we'll also repeat the PT and PTT after the treatment. And then one more thing you might add on to here is genetic counseling, not for the patient, but for mom, because she is a carrier. Uh, this is an X-linked recessive disorder, so she is the carrier. That means that she's got a 50-50 chance of having another child with hemophilia, um, well, another son with hemophilia. So if it's a, if it's a boy child, um, it's a 50-50 chance that he will uh, have hemophilia just like his older brother. Hemophilia is a congenital deficiency in one of the clotting factors. Usually it's eight or nine. Eight would be hemophilia A, nine would be hemophilia B. They're indistinguishable clinically, but hemophilia A is more common. Now the hallmark of hemophilia is deep bleeding. So with the platelet type bleeding, you get gum bleeding, maybe you brush your teeth and you get bleeding there, you might get menorrhagia, maybe you'll get some petechiae and purpura and stuff like that, but it's very light bleeding. Whereas with hemophilia, it's the deep bleeding, and this goes for any factor disorder. It's a deep, deep bleeding, so it's bleeding into the muscles, bleeding into the joints. You have a, a, a tooth taken out or a cavity filled and you start bleeding like nuts. Okay, this is hemophilia. It's deep bleeding, and musculoskeletal bleeding is the hallmark. The diagnosis, so the best initial test with any suspicion of bleeding is going to be a PT-PTT. It's the PTT that's going to tip us off here just because the PTT measures the particular factor, um, or the activity of the factor, rather, um, that we're looking at. And the most accurate test is to directly measure the factor level. PT will be normal in hemophilia, but PTT will be prolonged. And that's because this is going to be checking uh, 9 and 8. The treatment is factor concentrate. That's given for the acute bleeds. If there are mild bleeds, um, then we can give DDAVP. But on your exam, go for the factor concentrate. Uh, DDAVP is more for von Willebrand's. Um, the, there is a prophylaxis, a medication out called emicizumab, and uh, this is not your concern for the exam, but you should be aware that this drug is given uh, to prophylax people who have hemophilia. There are a number of complications. One of them is the development of a factor inhibitor, which would very much complicate treatment as it would render factor concentrate ineffective. So we gotta keep an eye out for that. This is just your, uh, your coagulation cascade. Notice eight here. So uh, PTT is measuring uh, the, this would be the intrinsic pathway. And then PT is the ex extrinsic pathway. And this is measured by PT. So PT and PTT. Uh, so now it's the PT that's elevated in hemophilia. This is a table with some of the common disorders in children with bruising and bleeding. I'm not going to go over all these, but suffice it to say that von Willebrand's and hemophilia have very similar lab results. The only way you're going to differentiate this is by getting a factor uh, assay and then get that von Willebrand's assay as well. And that's why we did both. Okay, uh, so common differentials, uh, kind of we went through all of these. I, I, I brought up, you know, the difference between platelet type bleeding and factor type bleeding. Uh, important to get that CBC, that's going to help uh, distinguish quantitative versus qualitative based on your platelet count. And from there, just getting a CBC, getting a PT, PTT can really help you narrow things down. And then you, you're really going to look at the clinical history. So to recap, hemophilia is a congenital deficiency, X-linked recessive, so it's going to be in boys, in one of the clotting factors, either 8 or 9, 8 being more common, and that's hemophilia A. Uh, the hallmark is musculoskeletal bleeding. This is deep bleeding, bleeding into the muscles, bleeding into the joints, and uh, the symptoms, therefore, are going to be of that factor type bleeding. Now, they can have bleeding from brushing their teeth and stuff like that, uh, but the, the hallmark is really that deep bleeding, and that will be presented to you. The best initial test is the uh, coagulation studies, and the most accurate test is factor levels. The treatment is going to be to attend to any acute bleeds via factor replacement, um, and so that's going to typically be the right answer on any exam.